So people and pipelines, it's a shorthand way of describing the ways in which firms make connections uh, in the international market. Um, you could think of, uh, of pipelines as the internal means that organizations use, like subsidiaries, for example, to move personnel, money, information, knowledge, and so on. People are the external social network means by which you do essentially the same thing. So most of us, media, scholars, policymakers, usually we're focused on large companies because one, they're important, and two, they're visible. However, the small companies in Canada are extremely important. Um, we know that about half of Canadians work for small firms. In fact, there's around a million small firms in Canada. Um, added to that by about 100,000 a year and around 100,000 small businesses exit every year also. So there's a huge churn in the population of small business. And so they're large employers, they are large exporters, perhaps a quarter of our GDP is exported by small companies. Um, they're machines of innovation, so very important to our economy. Um, the concept of people and pipelines is something that highlights the ways in which firms make international connections. The challenge for small firms, however, is that typically they don't have people and they don't have pipelines. So in that context, what becomes a really important question is how do small firms make those kinds of connections which are the same kind of, they have the same need as large firms do. It's an interesting thing that in the age of globalization, uh, there were people who believed that distance was dying or distance was dead. But it's a paradox, in fact, that as information uh, becomes more easily transferred, more cheaply transferred, um, that we're finding that economic activity is becoming even more uh, spiky, even more uh, geographically concentrated. So uh, one of the ways that scholars are interested in exploring this unevenness is through the concept of clusters, which are understood to be agglomerations of businesses that are connected through markets and through technology. So we see examples of clusters in Vancouver and in Toronto in entertainment, in Oshawa and Windsor in automotive. Um, we also see an example in Waterloo where uh, BlackBerry is a, a large uh, multinational technology firm and the mobile technology uh, industry or cluster organizes in kind of concentric circles around them. So the challenge with cluster membership is that it has both costs and benefits. SMEs are drawn, or I should say small companies, are drawn to clusters because there are deep pools of technical knowledge, uh, of labor, um, that there are, it's possible to observe uh, customers closely to have relationships with your competitors and perhaps derive benefits from the kind of knowledge spillovers that occur. And also in that kind of agglomeration, uh, investment in infrastructure becomes possible, whether that's uh, internet or roads and bridges, ports, it depends on the nature of the cluster. So it becomes possible to um, create that that milieu, that, that uh, place where certain kinds of business can operate uh, really effectively. And it's in that internal focus in which there are benefits, learning, knowledge, uh, benefiting from economies of scale. 
But that same inward focus is something that creates challenges for all firms and small firms in particular because the global economy is one where new markets, new technologies, new competitors, new suppliers can emanate from virtually anywhere. So it becomes important for all firms to become, to have a way of becoming aware of those external factors, of those ideas, trends, opportunities that emanate from outside the cluster. Large firms have the wherewithal to be able to do that for, them, for themselves. Small firms, on the other hand, they don't have those people and pipelines. And so finding out where these, uh, this new information is, where these markets are, what these technologies are, becomes a really uh, important problem for small firms to solve. This is where the concept of people and pipelines highlights the notion that we need to be thinking clearly about the ways in which this connectivity happens. So what we know is that first, there needs to be a type of common understanding of, uh, of common interests. The cluster needs to identify itself um, as being a cluster with certain interests to become aware of other markets, of other trends, of other suppliers, of other customers. Then there needs to be an assessment of the extent to which that cluster has the social, the technical, the commercial capital to be interesting to other clusters, whether it be Sil Silicon Valley or Route 128 or whatever the other cluster might be, to be of interest to these other groups of firms. And the third thing that we can see is important is that there needs to be a type of a triggering entity. There needs to be a person or a group, some entity that sees itself as being the, it sees it being, it being their job to derive these kinds of connections. My research suggests that many small firms are relatively passive in this process of being introduced to other external customers, technologies, trends. It is perhaps like uh, a wallflower that is leaning and waiting for someone else to ask them to dance. What we have found is that firms that are more proactive, that are ready and willing to take the bull by the horns and be strategically aggressive, are more capable of taking on, of benefiting from the kinds of opportunities that are being uh, introduced to them. What we find when speaking to businesses inside clusters is that there is a, a real tension inside them. On one hand, they are surrounded by their own competitors. On the other hand, what they acknowledge is that the world isn't in their cluster. They are only a tiny part of it. And so what becomes really important is to find ways to connect to the international market in collaboration with your, often with your competitors. So there is a kind of a, a co-optition, you could say. It's people are trying to find ways to cooperate as they compete because the entire game is not only in Waterloo, for example, for mobile technologies, or it's not only in Oshawa for automotive technologies. It, it's much, the world is much broader than that. And so what we find is that these interclusteral uh, alliances are one really important way for firms to find 
connections to others to put themselves into connection with the global trends in markets, in customers, with suppliers, and so on.